It's the glowing one. Oh. Oh. Okay. The wonders of modern technology. <laughs> I'll never understand it. Welcome everyone to what I am calling Matt and Mitzi's Modern Movie Madness. We well, love alliteration here. <laughs> where where we watch where we talk about a movie we just saw in theaters. And, and the, the cat, cat is here. The cat is here as well. <laughs> she has to put in her two cents. Please, Please do not. Do not my laptop. The laptop is not for you. She she has been very nice about not getting on my laptop, <laughs> in spite of Cat's famous love of computers. <laughs> Hello. But my my laptop is sensitive. It will break if a cat steps on it. So uh, we watched the movie Barbie, huh? Yes, we did. We <laughs> sure as fuck did. Um. Do you want to say things first? Should I say things first? <laughs> um, I am the resident Barbie enthusiast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen all the Barbie movies, right? I have. I have seen all of them, and I own almost all of them. I do not own all of them, sadly. Well, some of them are like Netflix movies that never really had come a physical out. release. Fucking yeah. Netflix, man. Cat, you are ruining this <laughs> shot. <laughs> Your ass is so here. Come on, come on. Razzle dazzle, baby she, girl. She doesn't want to sit in your lap. She wants to stand on the table. Well, if you want to stand on the table, then just sit. Pay, pay attention. This okay. is important. I am the resident Barbie enthusiast. I loved this movie to death. I think it did a good job representing Barbie. This is my Barbie from childhood. This is my favorite Barbie. I begged my mom to have her for from like when Barbie used to have like a catalog. I don't know if they have it anymore, but they used to have like a magazine that showed you all the latest collector Barbies. And she was supposed to be an I Dream of Jeannie Barbie. And I thought she was the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. So I begged my mom to have her. And now she's worth like $600 or something. And she's got chewed up feet. She lost her little headband. I don't know where her lamp is. But that's... This is a well-loved Barbie. This is a weird Barbie. This is a well-loved Barbie. No, this is not... This is not a weird Barbie. Yeah. Well, not not, we not nearly. Weird, weird Barbie this, had her hair cut up and her face all done I've, I've, I've known weird Barbies in my yeah. time. This is just a well... This is a well-loved Barbie. She has been with me since I was six years old. And uh, I've got uh, my Ken doll right here. Yes. Yes, here. He He's like here. so much shorter than her. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Hold on. Hail to the short, short king. king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a new movie from Greta Gerwig, who's like a director I really like, so I was kind of excited for this. I'm not the, used to seeing myself on film, so I'm just making faces. <laughs> the uh, The advertising for this really got me i'm like that like early on i'm like i credit Kerwig barbie movie that sounds like it could be good but it could also like i don't know no bombach wrote madagascar 3 if you think mattel doesn't know how to advertise <laughs> you'd be sorely mistaken it's fucking mattel so i guess i, I guess i want to start with like the three big problems I have with this movie, because otherwise, like, I think this is a perfect movie. I'm ready to dispute all of them. <laughs> so first off, not only is, like, th this is all spoilers, we should say. Very spoilers. Spoilers. Spoilers for the Barbie movie. So first off, right, Ken brings misogyny to the Barbie world. It's not only, like, not only is it, can you see it coming from, like, a mile away, I don't think they did it very well. Because hmm. I don't think, like, okay, so if you, if you take a woman who has no familiarity with the patriarchy and just tell her about it, she becomes, like, a brainless bimbo who will just do whatever you tell her. Hmm. And the only way to break her out is this one woman, like, angrily ranting at them. <laughs> it doesn't... I don't, I don't know what they're trying to say with this. I don't understand... I what is think, what is going on with this story? I think it has to do with okay. So you've got so you've got um the I, I think it all comes down to the the big oh, I can't think of the word for it right now. The guys in the suits, the big businessman yeah. Will Ferrell. Yeah, it, like Will Ferrell was like weird things are gonna start happening, and that's just kind of like I think this world is like 
just easily influenced in general. Because it's like, it's like make-believe. It's play-pretend. And I think, in my mind, the other Kens got on board with it first. And then they all just started going along with it. Because they didn't really know what was happening. But like, I don't know. I think, in general, it's just such a weird concept to have it be like, when you conceive of this doll, this doll becomes like a real person in a doll world that you can transport yourself to via magical <laughs> roller skates. Like, it's so weird that like, I don't even think I would question it at that point. Like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Like, these are... But toys they are very I, I, easily I did, influenced i didn't mean in like the i meant like when you're talking about like the overall like what the movie is trying to say what the movie is about i feel like this is like i don't know what they're trying to say with this i don't know where they're going with this mm -hmm. like thematically and i mean maybe like part of the problem i guess is like no movie Certainly not the Barbie movie is just going to hand you, like, here is the solution to all misogyny. Yeah, no. Like, you can't have... The, but at the same time, like... I don't know. I, I just... I don't understand it from, like, a thematic standpoint. I don't know what I am supposed to glean from this about I, feminism, about the patriarchy. I... I, I, I think... <laughs> I think... I think all of the stuff from... What Ken does, I don't think you're supposed to get the message from that, right? Like, I don't think that that is supposed to be the central point. I think Ken's journey is sort of finding out that he does not have to be the worst version of himself. <laughs> like, that's a weird way to put it, but it's like, I think the message of this movie is sort of like a feminist gender equality message and I think the whole of it, I mean, yeah. thematic, well, the whole of it thematically is like, and I think there are other themes to it too. I don't think it's just this, but it's also just like. I should probably advise you not to tap the table oh, too much. Sorry. That like fucks up I'm the mic. I'm fidgety. I'm fidgety. Um, I, I didn't warn you. I, I, I am equally guilty of just bumping things around <laughs> on the table and making bad noises in the microphone. Ken's journey in this film is uh, realizing that, like, first coming to the real world and realizing that things are sort of reverse in his world and kind of trying to change that up. But, like, I think the movie is saying, like, this is bad either way. It does not matter which way you do this. It does not matter which gender you are doing this to, it is bad. You should not be doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't I think mean, it's trying to hand you a solution. I think it's trying to say, like, this This just ain't it. That's not but, it, man. But it does hand you the solution. The, the solution to patriarchy is to just get all the men distracted with a big homoerotic musical number with their romantic rival. That's true. That That's would true. fix all of the problems yeah. in our society. Yeah. I, um, and they're right. They're right. <laughs> but they won't do it. Problem number two that I have. I, I'm not sure how I feel about this ending with Barbie becoming real. Because, like, I, I sort of saw her as, like, stand in for, for the woman for... What's her name? America Ferreira or something. Who? Um, the, the mom. Oh. The mother character. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I don't remember her actress's name. I don't remember the name of actors. I know most her first of the time. name is America. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember the name of actors most of the time. So <laughs> I, I, I thought Barbie was supposed to be like stand in for her, the way like Emmett from the Lego Movie is the kid playing with the Legos, um. right? And so when Barbie decides to become a real woman at the end of this. It's like, I thought, but I thought she she was that real woman, wasn't she? She was supposed to be that real woman already. Now I will... Cat asshole right in the shot. Oh, she's, she is a whore. She likes, she just loves getting in this position where she exposes her <laughs> asshole. 
Cat, don't start an OnlyFans on our channel. Please don't. Not here, not now. Go, go, my child. No. Gratuitous Hi. pussy shot. <laughs> now, I will offer, like, kind of de of a, a defense of my criticism here, which is that I think the movie largely is about how we, as adults in the modern era, conceptualize Barbie. Mm -hmm. you, you start off with, like, the, the colorful, fanciful Barbie world, and, you know, then you, you, she comes to the real world, and she's getting all these issues with the real world, and she finds the little girl who's probably right about the age where she's become, like, totally disenfranchised with, like, Barbie and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and she prattles she's off... She's in the, uh, I hate pink phase. Yeah, she prattles off all the, like, feminist talking points about Barbie that have been around basically as long as the character has existed. Mm -hmm. And I think the ending is sort of an attempt to, like... To say to, to 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 say like okay we we don't want you to think of Barbie as like this magical girl in this magical world we don't want you to think of her as this like the scourge of feminism we just want you to think of her as a real woman mm -hmm. with real problems doing real world things mm -hmm. but I think they kind of shot themselves on the foot by tying her to this one specific woman who's like projecting all of her insecurities onto this Barbie. Into, onto this specific Barbie. And I think it might have been, like, a more powerful ending to have, you know, Barbie wishing to be a real woman, and then it's like, okay, and, oh, it's America Ferreira's character. That's, mm -hmm. I don't think that's her last name. I think I'm getting that wrong. I think yes, and I think no. <laughs> I think you, because you already have it established right away that this is, ooh, Pink Sparkles. Matt's doing some Googling. Um, oh, I was right. It was America Ferreira. Huh. That just sounds like a fake name. That sounds like a wrestler from the 80s. Because, again, you already have it established that, like, Barbie Land is, like, another world, right? And you have it established that, like, the doll is connected to this character in their world, right? Right. So, and I think it's less, like... The Lego movie, like you had said before, I think it's less like the Lego movie and more like, I guess I would just say its own thing, um, but it's also like Life Size, which is a movie that I like. Not that she is controlling her, it's that like, uh, Cat loves Barbie too. Cat just wants to rub her face up again. No, don't bite her hair. No. Because it's, like, explained in there that, like, she is being influenced by how her doll is being played with. Like, that is, that is the thing that is happening. But she still is is very much her own physical being, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's very powerful at the end of the movie because of, like, the scene that she has. By the way, the old woman she's talking to in the movie is Barbie. She is the daughter that she was named after. That mm. is Barbie. Oh, okay. I was wondering who who was playing that old woman. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think also a lot of this movie is reconciling with the existential dread of aging and like dying and like being like being older, being Greta Gerwig, I think it was. I can't remember if it was her exactly, but somebody who was working on the movie described this as like thing girls go through like girls and women go through where they're like they're full of energy they're full of life and they're full of confidence and that all just kind of starts to crumble and go away and they think they're not good enough so i think with barbie becoming real you know especially when you look back at like her you know looking at this like older woman she looks at all the cellulite and stuff she thinks about dying i think it's trying to connect the points of, like, sometimes you do feel like this, like, when you are a child, sometimes you do feel like this endless immortal being. And then at some point, you kind of have an existential crisis and it just snaps that, like, oh, I'm gonna get older, I'm gonna look different, I'm gonna Whoa. feel different, and then I'm going to die. And I think her becoming real, like, that is very powerful, because I think that's kind of, like, not only this, like, acceptance but this desire to change and grow as a whole and real person you know because she says like at the end of the movie like i don't feel like i belong here anymore and by the way i was sobbing at the end of this movie it, <laughs> it got to me so bad 
but it's like it's it's that acceptance and that desire to accept and embrace life despite all the pain and the suffering and the fact that it ends mm -hmm. and welcoming that with it i think this movie is a full-on like existential crisis condensed into a pretty pink plastic wonderland and acid trip somebody described it as like a pink acid trip or something like that with confusingly attractive people somebody described that in their one star review and i'm like that's something i'd give a five star review what are you talking about <laughs> i think i understand how it can be confusing but i think it is still emotionally satisfying i mean no i agree i think i think overall the movie's very good i don't think this ending ruins the movie i just think like it, to me it seemed like what they were going for would have worked better if at the end of the movie it was just america ferrera's character mm -hmm. gloria mm -hmm. it's written right here i like how half of them don't have names because they're just <laughs> it's barbie or ken yeah <laughs> um, like sierra is alan i i saw when i saw the trailer for this movie I was like, oh shit, Alan representation, <laughs> fuck yeah. Um, and then they, he proceeded to be the best character in the movie. <laughs> Alan was, was tough here. I did, <laughs> my third issue, uh, they didn't give uh, uh, Earring Magic Kin his cock ring. No, that one I'll agree with you. Fucking they should have just given him, yeah. Give him the cock ring. Give him the cock ring. Otherwise, I think this is like a perfect movie. This mm -hmm. is like, it's funny it's extremely well acted very well cast uh movie i love the sets the sets the sets in this the movie sets are, are amazing built. i they're built baby i really hope hollywood learns the wrong lesson from this movie <laughs> and starts making more big set movies like they used to you know bring back like the grinch or the flintstones yes bring that shit back i want more big set movies your move, MCU. <laughs> like, and then, <laughs> like, like, the whole transition sequence from when they go to, like, Barbie land to, uh, uh the real world. It's all practical. It's so great. Like, <laughs> why? It's a movie. Why? Why can't all movies look like this? It's fucking magical. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's because the VFX people are non-union, so they can pay them shit. Time for VFX people to fucking unionize. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Now's the time. It's so perfect. Do it. Don't tell them I told you. <laughs> don't tell them. Don't, don't, don't tell Hollywood. Just, okay. just, just, just unionize. I, uh, the sets were great. The music was great. The fucking Ken dance number, the, the musical number. It was phenomenal. It was great. I didn't know Ryan Gosling could sing. So that was a surprise to me. This better, <laughs> this fucking better win. Best original song. Yeah. I think there's a few Oscars. This, uh, this better have, like, best production design. Has best Ryan, costumes. Has Ryan Gosling been in another movie where he sings and I just haven't seen it? He was in La La Land. I haven't seen La La Land. I haven't seen that movie. It's a good movie. You'd okay. really like that movie. I would? Yeah. yeah, that's a really good movie. I'm surprised you haven't seen it. I that haven't. seems right up your alley. I haven't. It's a very good movie. I, well, the, thing, the problem is... Do I have that one? The problem with La La I Land is I haven't heard one. anything about it other than, It's La La Land! I didn't know anything about the plot or anything, so I'm like, Okay. It's, a good it's movie. La La Land, it's, I guess. It's Damien Chazelle. <laughs> have you seen Whiplash? I haven't. La La Land. La La Land. You said that, and I'm like, I know he's been in, like, a musical or something. <laughs> Liz Lizzo's in it. Lizzo does a song for it. And that's good. She's always well, she good. <laughs> Did she do, like, the opening, like, narration song that then yes. goes wrong? Okay, I thought yeah. that was her. Yeah. Uh, the music was great. Sets were great. Cinematography's great. I'm really glad... I mean, like, obviously there are, like, feminist reasons to, to have a female director on this. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they got a female director because a straight man director would not have made Kin this gay. Yeah. And a gay director might have made him too gay. I think Greta <laughs> Gerwig hit He's just the like, right amount of gay. Yeah, she hit the right amount of homoeroticism with this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, all the sets, like all the playhouses and stuff, by the way, those are real. Those are real and they exist in the real world. You can purchase them. 
if you ever feel like you want to. Um, Every set is based on like a real toy. Like the the houses and like the outfits and the like cars and boats and the camper and stuff like that. All of all of that stuff. All of that stuff is like real toys, real Barbie toys that you can purchase. Can I, I, can I, I loved. Buy, can I buy John Cena merman? Maybe. <laughs> I'm sh- there was a merman, but I don't know if you can buy John Cena merman. I hope they put out a John Cena merman. I hope every single Barbie in this, I hope like, like Margot Robbie, there is a Margot Robbie Barbie. I want to get that. I want to get the, the official like Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling Barbie and Ken. I hope they put out fucking John Cena mermaid. <laughs> It just is a John Cena doll. They just ripped off like <laughs> his like uh, legs from his action figure, put on a wig, and. <laughs> you know what's wild though? They didn't re-release Alan. No. <laughs> like they made they they put him like front and center in this movie. He's the best character. Everyone loves him. No Alan re-release. No Alan. Those are ripped to Alan. <laughs> To a that, king. <laughs> that that one person who has like twenty Allen dolls in their basement is like, oh fuck yeah, man! <laughs> this I'm is about the to time. make so much money. <laughs> I mean, like, I want to compliment actors, but it's like all like every single one of them did like such a good job. Yeah, Kate McKinnon as weird Barbie, great, hot. I loved her. It's the role she was born to play. She's attractive. She is. So is Margot Robbie. I love that joke because she's like complaining about being ugly and it's just like the narrator just has to chime in where it's like, if they wanted to make this point, they shouldn't have cast Margot Robbie. <laughs> the, the, the narrator is Helen Mirren, ah. which is kind of, I, I was kind of surprised that like the old lady she ran into later was not also Helen Mirren. Mm-hmm. But if she's like the, the creator of Barbie's daughter mm-hmm. for whom Barbie is named, yeah. that checks out. Because I knew, I knew the creator was dead. Yeah. They say in the movie she's dead. Her ghost has, uh, what was it, on the second floor? She has an office on the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> I did I did love the, like, Mattel... Meta humor. <laughs> it, like, bo- both, like, you know, they show up and it's like a boardroom full of men making the decisions about Barbie. But then they're, like, so much more wholesome than, like, actual... Boardroom Business, people. Businessmen. Yeah. Well, it's uh, they're they're a lot more enjoyable. Like they're more enjoyable to watch. I love what uh, Will Ferrell's lines in these movies. In this movie, is so good. Like when he's when he's like, "I got into this business because I care about little girls' dreams in the least creepy way possible." <laughs> <laughs> Will Ferrell's so weird because like half the stuff he puts out now is just like, "Oh God, oh God, why?" And then he'll just do like a Barbie movie. Or we a watched, fucking Lego movie. Or a Eurovision movie. We watched the Eurovision movie recently because I needed to give Matt and our other friends context for why my Eurovision when I talk about Eurovision at them. <laughs> I needed them to have context. My favorite line in this movie is, I lost interest in pay- patriarchy when I learned it wasn't about horses. <laughs> I just, I love that line. I'm just like, yeah. I mean, that seemed like kind of like you know, like a child's lie. It's like, it's okay. I don't care. Yeah. I lost interest when I found out it wasn't about horses. <laughs> I love Ken's obsession with horses in the movie. The thing, what's weird to me is that they're fucking Monty Pythoning it, <laughs> pretending to be on horses, and I'm looking at it and I'm like, here's my problem with the movie. Barbie has horses. Barbie has so many fucking horses. You couldn't Please have gotten some pla- oh. Please don't bang the table. <laughs> I didn't mean I'm sorry, they get, I'm not they used the, to this. They got the plastic dog in there. They got I the guess. plastic dog, not the horses. Not the horses. Not the fucking Pegasus. <laughs> she has a Pegasus. A whole ass Pegasus. My favorite part was the Bibble post credit scene. Yeah. <laughs> I wish that were true. <laughs> I wish we had gotten to see fucking Fairy Barbie and fucking Bibble. I would have been into that. I was Bibble a thing before the movie? Yeah. What? What do you mean? Like before, like the Fairytopia movies? Yeah. No, no. Bibble was created from the Fairytopia movies, and every everybody decided that Bibble should be worshipped like a god. Bibble's like the mascot. I'm in a Facebook uh, group called Barbie Mattel posting, and Bibble's like the fucking like shrine mascot. <laughs> All hail Bibble. 
<laughs> See, I, th I think you can tell a lot about a person by what Bibble means to them. Because to you, it's a Barbie character. <laughs> Me, I think of that joke from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. But then, of course, there's also Bibble from fucking uh, iCarly. Mm -hmm. No, Victorious. Yes. Yeah. The, like, like, popcorn candy. Yeah. The, that's the three genders. <laughs> That's it. It's popcorn, our Aqua Teen Hunger for it's it's candy corn, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and Barbie. <laughs> Comment which one you are in the comments below. Tag yourself. Yes. Do you have anything else you would like to say about this movie? Hmm. I certainly had things I wanted to say before, and I guess my brain just doesn't want to remember them. I really liked it. It was a good movie. I did. I liked it too. Yeah. This is like right below Spider Verse for my favorite movie of the year. Mm -hmm. I, I I had a very emotional time watching it. I'm I'm going to try. Here's the part where I actually say I'm going to try to put out a series talking about the Barbie movies on my own channel that doesn't exist yet. It will. I promise. I do want to do that. I know it's something that's been done before, but I want to do it because I need to have an excuse to watch these movies with Matt and we've watched six of them six of them there's we, I've lived I have lived with you for like six months now those were recorded at my old apartment yeah, they were they were the, the problem is like since you've moved in here damn it I touched the table again That's fine. since you've been moving in here and since I've been trying to like keep up with being an adult it's just been like hectic and I haven't like schedule the time to just sit down and do it like because we're always doing something else we're always doing something fucking else i'll be honest with you i remember like nothing from those six movies i remember the rapunzel movie the rapunzel movie is kind of stuck with me uh and i remember the villain and the barking cat from princess and the pauper Princess and the Pauper is one of my favorites. I didn't even immediately remember that it was a Princess and the Pauper one. I'm like, God, what happened? And I remember the villain and the cat. That's it. Oh, yeah, there was two of them. It was Princess and the Pauper. Mm -hmm. Princess and the Pauper, one of my favorites. Rapunzel, one of my favorites. Nutcracker, absolutely my favorite. Nutcracker means a lot to me. I think Rapunzel has to be my favorite because it's the only one that has, like, stuck with me at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, the rest of these, I'm just like, it's, like, in one ear and out the other. I'm like, that sure was a fucking Barbie movie. Now, this Barbie movie, this is my favorite Barbie movie. The new one, absolutely my favorite Barbie movie of the seven That's that fair. I have seen. Yeah. No, I, I want to start a whole channel where I just talk about toy media. I'm really deep into toy media. Like, also, look at me. <laughs> this is also my favorite Greta Gerwig movie. You need to get that Greta Gerwig Barbie. <laughs> I, yeah, I want the, the, the one Ryan Gosling was where I said, like, directed by... Uh, Greta Gerwig. That's, I've got Neon Genesis Evangelion Garfield. I'm wearing Monster High. I'm also I wearing think, Worm on a String and Furby. I think these are. this is back up now, but for a while Viacom took it down. Oh, really? <laughs> Even though it's, it's original art of Garfield. Mm. You can tell it's not, like, the one from the show. Mm. Um, although I think I'm one of the few people who got it in purple. Most people have it in, like, black or white. Anyways, thanks for joining us for uh, Matt and Mitzi's Modern Movie Madness. Bye. We'll see you next time. All right, let's get a shot for the thumbnail. Let's let's like lean away and then like put the movie poster in the middle, right? Like <laughs> Sure. We'll use we'll use some one of those.